So um, the future of personalized medicine is probably going to depend somewhat on uh, small internal devices that track and monitor uh, physiological yep. systems. Um, so we're going to have to power those in some way. Um, I have a question about um, how we're going to do that, and I wonder what's wrong with batteries? Why can't we just use batteries? Well, <coughs> actually, batteries are quite good. Um, and so as somebody who tries to work on technology which is trying to displace batteries, I shouldn't really admit to the fact that batteries are quite good, but they are. Um, but ultimately, they still are a finite power source, and eventually they will run out. So you have a, probably a smartphone. You have to charge it every day. Um, and obviously, with a smartphone, you can do that because you have it in your hand. You put it on your bedside cabinet. You can charge it. If we're talking about something like a heart pacemaker, it's a lot more difficult to charge. So we want to try and come up with some mechanisms where we can displace batteries from, from those sorts of applications. Okay. And so the, the um, development of new types of tools that can generate energy at that kind of level, um, there must be some real challenges with that because it's not been done yet. So can yes. you speak a little <coughs> bit about the challenges? Sure. So we're, we're basically looking at generating energy from either thermoelectric devices or from motion-driven devices. So I think most people should be able to relate to the Seiko Kinetic Watch as being something which is self-powered from the motion of the human body. But of course, you know, you think about a wristwatch, it's this sort of size on your wrist. Um, and it requires actually a very low amount of power. I mean, it's, it's got one very specific function, which is to tell you what the time is. And actually, the, the average power consumption of a watch is only something like uh, one to two microwatts. Um, and of course, then, you know, the, you look at the size of the device and you think, well, that's, that whole thing is only generating one or two microwatts. Um, it's actually, the reason Seiko has been very successful with that product is because it was a very good application for energy harvesting. It's, it's possible to generate that amount of power in that volume without too much difficulty. Of course, we want to make these devices smaller. Uh, and the smaller you make them, the harder it is to generate that level of power. Um, and that's where the challenges really start to come in, in the, in the miniaturization. <clears throat> and then there are challenges throughout the whole chain because you've got the mechanical system, which is coupling the energy in from, from the motion of, of maybe someone's arm or chest. Um, it's got to move some generator, and then that generator has ultimately to, to, to give you a stable DC voltage to power sensors and a radio. Um, and that power processing is also very difficult, because as you shrink down the power levels, all of the control overhead that you, was, that you would normally say was a, a negligible amount of power consumption of the system suddenly isn't negligible anymore. Because, you know, if the whole system is only consuming a microwatt, maybe you've only got a few nanowatts to actually run the control system. Uh, and that in itself is a real challenge. So if you had, um, you know, a number of things you wanted to monitor internally, um, I can ask one question. Is, it, is, it, is there a limit to the number of those things? Or would you envis envision having one power source that could power many? <coughs> I think one of the, I mean, actually... It's probably important to distinguish between what we consider energy harvesting and what we consider to be renewable energy. Um, and this doesn't sound like it's related to your question, but it is. Um, renewable energy, like wind turbines uh, and big solar arrays that you see installed, um, producing you know, hundreds of kilowatts which feed into the electricity grid, we normally term that um, renewable energy rather than energy harvesting. It's still energy harvesting in that it is pulling energy from the ambient mm -hmm. and it's making it useful. Um, but normally we, we would define energy harvesting as being where the energy is used locally to the particular device. So a wind turbine generates power, it gets put into the transmission grid and sent hundreds of miles uh, before it gets used. Whereas with an energy harvesting device, we have that little generator and we use the energy in the same point as the generator. And the same probably goes in the human body. You would probably have an energy harvesting device for each individual sensor mm -hmm. rather than having one centralized source, mm -hmm. simply because you can't run the wires very easily. Mm -hmm. You want to have one single power source sensor and radio and that makes the whole, if you like, installation into the human body much easier. Yeah. So you really do have to have something really small. It's got to be small. <laughs> and I think yeah. if, you, if you push it too hard, in terms of what the limit is of, of the total energy that you can get, eventually the body will react in a bad way. Mm -hmm. So if you think about thermoelectric devices, for instance, and there are d some devices now that have been prototyped. Uh, there's an EEG from uh, IMEC Holse Centre, mm -hmm. uh, which is powered by thermoelectric devices. And these devices work actually quite nicely. The question really is what happens with the long-term use of these devices because eventually the body will start to adapt. Mm -hmm. And if the body realises, for instance, that it's losing too much heat from a certain point, 
to power this thermoelectric device, then the blood vessels will, will contract at that point and then the thing will stop working. So I think the body will have a defence mechanism against some of these things and as long as we keep the power levels low enough then it will be okay, but if we push it too hard then the body will react in a bad way.